Hi everyone, this is Robert here with Mod Science, uh, Facebook Mod Science, modscience.net. Check out the websites, they are slowly developing. And with more pictures and videos, I have some Ryzen builds um, that I'm going to be putting up there, and I'll be posting videos along these lines here about uh, custom looping, all that good stuff. Uh, anyway, so today I am following up with the uh, Mayhem's uh, Blitz kit. What I've done, I actually shot some footage of it last night. I just wasn't happy with the footage. So I, um, I started the part one of the Mayhem's Blitz kit, um, which is an acid-based radiator cleaner. Um, so I actually bought the Blitz kit itself, not the pro version. The pro version actually comes with like a pH balance kit. Uh, this one kind of does. It has like testers for it, um, uh, just to uh, just so you can actually test your pH levels, all that stuff after you blitz the radiator and your system. Um, so inside of the kit, you get like some goggles here, and then you also get a pack of of some. Uh, uh, I think it was like latex free or. Um, uh, dust free or something kind of gloves. They're, they're, they're free of any sort of lubricant or, or any of that uh, chalky uh, um, stuff that's inside of some gloves. But anyway, I also get a, uh, an instruction manual which is really just a couple of pages printed out. Uh, it's actually pretty informative, pretty easy to follow. Uh, when I first started uh, looking into blitzing the kit, it actually seemed a little bit more daunting than it really was, but it's actually pretty easy. So anyway, there's part one. Uh, which is an acid-based radiator cleaner. Um, it's only for copper and brass tube radiators. Uh, it even says there not to use it on aluminum tube radiators, otherwise you could damage it. Um, but yeah, I made the mistake uh, of not blitzing. I, I've um, taken out my radiator and my, my pump and, and um, reservoir kit for my Corsair 570X. It's a Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 build, Ryzen 1600. Um, I had some red EK coolant in there, some of the pastel coolant. Um, I haven't cleaned out these things, so bear with me there. But uh, these guys have been both, and this is the uh, like a 120 millimeter radiator that I'll be using on the Wrath build that I have uploaded on my site. That's the Ryzen 7 with uh, the uh, M um, AMD Vega Frontier Edition installed. You should check that out. It's on my site. I have pictures and some video. Um, but this is a 120 millimeter fan, um, I'm sorry, radiator with a fan, a slim fan, uh, which is a high pressure fan. It was very hard to find too, by the way, but anyway, and high static pressure. And so this guy um, has been, um, this one actually needed it more from, what the, from the looks of it. This one was actually pretty dirty when I first got it from Newegg. And I haven't used this radiator yet, but I have used this one. And I made the mistake, I was brand new to custom looping, so I made the mistake of not actually blitzing my radiator prior to having everything installed. And as a result, um, I had a lot of like buildup inside of my, my um, Evo block, my, GPU, uh, my um, CPU block. So um, I read about it a little bit more and realized that I probably should have blitzed, uh, at, at least flushed the radiators. Now, the intent behind the Mayhem Splits kit is to kind of um, eliminate a lot of the contaminants that are inside of a radiator, and apparently it's very, it's highly suggested that uh, that you always flush your radiators, even if they're new, regardless of the manufacturer. I, I read online that um, EK's radiator kits were actually pretty clean whenever you got them, um, but. Um, that's why I didn't ever flush it, uh, but you know again, I, I did have some buildup develop inside of the blocks So uh, I figured I should probably do this the right way Especially considering I'll be doing some beta testing for EK's uh, new coolants which are coming out, but um, anyway um, So anyway, so the kit instructions. This is the uh, the manual that comes with the, the safety glasses the pH balance test kit gloves and then here's part two of the kit itself now uh, this stuff is also not safe to leave around kids. Both of the they highly stress not to uh, to, to leave this stuff around, uh, not not to uh, to leave this stuff away from any children or pets. So I mean, this stuff is acid, right? This stuff is right here, so you have to be very careful with it. Uh, but this is part two of it. So you use this to flush the radiator, okay? And then you, you use this to flush. Uh, the actual loop itself. Um, I haven't done this part yet. I will be prior to because I, I have some of the EK um, uh, EK coolants coming in. I can't really talk too much about what the coolants are and all that stuff because I'm a beta tester and I had to sign an NDA, so it's pretty cool, actually. But um, 
Anyway, uh, so this stuff, you, you mix one part of the Blitz part one, uh, one part of it to three parts of distilled or deionized uh, de water, either one of those was fine. I actually bought some of Mayhem's Pure H2O, I think is what it's called, uh, but I didn't use it to blitz these rads, I just wanted to save that stuff for the actual loop itself. But one part, uh, you, this is a 250 milliliter bottle, and they suggest that you do uh, one full bottle to 750 milliliters of deionized or um, uh, distilled water. And uh, I just used a half of it, 125 milliliters to 375 milliliters of, of uh, distilled water. And I was able to fill this 360 millimeter radiator, which is a 25 millimeter one. It's a pretty, uh, I think it's a 25, no, it's about a 30 millimeter if I'm not mistaken. And then also this is the EK Coolstream SE. This is a slim radiator. It's 25 millimeters, about the size of a normal uh, case fan. Fill one of these guys up, fill one of these guys up, um, which is, a t uh, again, a 360 milliliter, 30 millimeter, I believe, um, thickness. Fill them both up, and I have maybe, I would say, maybe another, maybe like a, another, hmm, I don't know, 50 to 100 milliliters left, which I have stored. So I'll be using that um, at a later time. So anyway, so they're both been sitting for about nine and a half hours now. You're, uh, they, the, the instruction manual that you get, will simply tell you um, how long that this particular cooling kit should sit per these and, and they said it's per uh, per kit that you get anyway so this one is anywhere between six to twelve hours and uh, they've been sitting for about nine and a half hours i wanted to leave them sitting for full 12 but i don't have time because i do have to get to work soon but anyway so what i'm going to do is i'll uh, i actually mixed one part to three parts in, um, um, installed them both uh, into or filled both um, radiators with it. They suggest that you elevate the kit slightly, so I laid it on top of like a little box that I had whenever you're actually filling the kits just to make sure that it fills up the entire thing. And then once you have it filled, you want to make sure that you plug these things with good radiator plugs uh, with. Um, with uh, O-rings installed on them. These are the actual plugs that came with the 120 millimeter radiator. These are EK plugs that I've used and uh, let them sit, right? So I filled them. You, you have to move them around just to make sure you get all the air um, circulated or all the bubbles taken out and then let them sit. So they've been sitting for about nine and a half hours now. So I think that's sufficient. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drain them and then I'll show you so what, what the actual fluid looks like and then I'll also flush them both out with just clean water. Um, you can either use distilled water to clean them through or like under a faucet um, and then also um, they suggest that you rinse them about four or five times after that and then they'll be good to go, right? Um, but anyway, um, stay tuned. I'll go ahead and get that started here in a bit and I'll have footage of the, the fluids um, after they've come out of the radiator. Okay. And we're back here. So I've just drained the 120 milliliter uh, radiator, which isn't too much fluid inside of it, surprisingly. Anyway, you'll notice that the color of this fluid is blue. Now, you know, again, that is showing you the effectiveness of the fluid, apparently, because it is normally white whenever it comes out, or it's normally clear fluid um, whenever you first put it into the loop. So that blue is all of the gunk and chemicals that have been released. And then you can also kind of see some of the particles, and it's actually quite a bit, uh, that have come out of that radiator itself, okay? So normally they're very clean, apparently, but, you know, think about that. That's all stuff that normally would have just ended up in your loop. Um, it the same thing happened to me. It was a rookie mistake, so hopefully, you know, you kind of learn from, uh, from, from that, and, and to understand that you don't necessarily have to use a blitz kit, but, you know, it does pretty much strip the radiator of all contaminants. So you could use like, uh, from, I've read just like uh, boiled distilled water and letting it cool down and then flushing the radiator numerous times doing that method. There's a lot of different things that you can look up. But I mean, if you want to kind of take it really serious, this stuff cost me 30 bucks, the kit itself. I bought it at a micro center, but you can buy it online from a few vendors. Uh, I think Performance PCs has the kit on sale too. I think they even have like a pro kit. Um, but yeah, 30 bucks is what I bought it for. And yeah, look at that gunk, man. It's just a ton of gunk built up there. I mean, this is all stuff that would have just ended up in in your your blocks. And apparently, you know, if, if you uh, 
let this stuff build up over time. You know, it causes clogs and then it could potentially even cause leaks uh, or even a fitting, uh, uh, some of your tubing will pop off of your fitting. Um, so definitely worth the time and the effort. It doesn't take too much time to do it. Um, you obviously you have, I have the blue hand and the blue gloves on and you'll notice that you see that discoloration there. Uh, that is some of the acid having eaten away at the at the gloves material itself. So it is highly suggested that you wear these um, because it's obviously an acid and it's eating away at your skin <laughs> uh, if you make contact with it. But um, keep a, a damp cloth nearby in case you spill anything. And uh, I had a little bit of spillage after I cracked open the lid there. Um, these are the plugs that I was talking about that came with the radiator itself, just little plastic things with the no ring that I had from uh, an Alpha Alpha Cool kit. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward. And if you look into that thing, um, I don't know if the light really captures it, but I'll tell you what, that's uh, that's way cleaner than it was when I first when I first got it, because those this port had like a bunch. These two ports had like a bunch of uh, white chalky material. Um, which is now laying in the bottom of this little tub here. So definitely worth the time and the effort. It's not very difficult to do. And so that was the per first part of the Mayhens kit. I'm going to flush the radiator out numerous times with water. And four or five times is what they suggest. And then you use this little pH strip to test um, the, the, uh, the cl I guess, the overall pH balance of the water. I don't really know how to do all that, but... Uh, I will eventually learn, of course, and I'll maybe even post them, some of the results for you, too. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drain the rest of this guy here, and uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so I've just drained uh, the 360 milliliter, uh, millimeter radiator that I had here, um, and you can tell. Um, now, this was a, a loop that you puffed apart in some of the red coolant that was from uh, some of the other parts that I had uh, fully haven't fully drained probably should have done that a little bit better anyway um, so here it doesn't look um, as I look at it here it doesn't look as blue as it does on the screen right now um, mainly because this was a radiator that already had coolant running through it and all that kind of stuff but uh, you can still you, you can based on the video you can actually see some of a blue tint to it so it did get some of the um, contaminants out um, not as much um, build up and particles in there mainly because <laughs> a lot of it's probably sitting in my mono block which will have to clear or the water block um, but still some build up and some contaminants so even after running uh, the system you know for for some time with some coolant in it there's still some build up there um, so this will help uh, with uh, the cleanliness and uh, uh, more of the, uh, the flow uh, inside of the loop there's if you look closely you can kind of see some particles at the bottom but, you know, that just goes to show you, I mean, this one was never used, brand new, and, I mean, this thing had way more gunk inside of it than that. I mean, look at that gunk buildup. I mean, that's all stuff that would have just ended up in your loop, all that kind of stuff. This is from the unused 120 milliliter, uh, millimeter arm radiator, and this is from the used uh, 360 millimeter radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see the difference between the two. Remember, that's a brand new radiator right there with nothing ever having been flushed out of it. So that's why it's important to do this stuff, right? Um, I've learned myself. And then <clears throat> the um, even still, even after even after using it. For okay, some just picking up where I left off. So yeah, even after using the coolant, uh, the radiator for some time, there's still some buildup inside of it. So it was good to flush it out. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and dispose of these two down the drain, and then I'm going to flush out both radiators a few times with water. Um, four or five times is what the uh, instruction manual suggests, and then maybe even test out the pH levels. I won't have time to do that this morning, but I'll at least flush out the radiators and then get them prepped for installation to my two builds. Um, so anyway, um, didn't take too much time and, uh, you know, wear those gl uh, gloves because uh, you saw earlier that, you know, that material can actually, um, th that acid actually eats away to me. And I, I actually felt a little bit of a tingling sensation uh, inside of the gloves uh, even, even after wearing the gloves. So, you know, probably better to feel it, um, you know, through the actual uh, gloves themselves instead of actually on your skin. 
Um, but yeah, thanks again for checking out the video. Uh, again, this is the Blitz Part 1 and Part 2, uh, just a standard kit. Um, pretty useful. Um, this is today's footage was covering this guy right here, Part 1 of 2. And then in a later time, I'll show you some of the footage of using the Part 2. Anyway, thanks again for checking it out. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe uh, for more. And uh, check out my website at modscience.net. Also visit the Facebook page. And leave any questions or comments below. Thanks again.